a nice big mobile work table is our project this week on Woodworking with Wes. We're going to show you how to make a beautiful work table that is strong, durable, able to withstand all the work that you want to put on it, and it's easy to build with products that you can get locally. So, let's build it. As with all of our work in the shop, we start with a drawing on our whiteboard that will give us the information that we need to to begin our cutting. Our assembly table top is going to be 42 by 84. This is a drawing of the table from the side. Here's our table top. This will be our wood structure that we're going to put together, and I'll go through that in just a minute. We're going to have some large wheels, and I'm going to talk about the special wheels that we bought too. The wheels are 7 inches tall, our wood structure is 23 inches tall, and our top is going to be three thicknesses of 3 quarter inch particle board and melamine put together so we have a 2 and a quarter inch solid top. The first thing we're going to do is build what I call the ribs, and I've listed out the size of my ribs, and we're going to build one so we can show you how it goes. After we get our ribs built, this would be looking straight down on our table without the top on. Once we get our ribs built, we are going to put three pieces of 2 by 6 material, the length top and bottom. So there will be three pieces here and three pieces here that will tie it all together and give us a good strong base to our tabletop. Let's build a rib. I've assembled one of the ribs so that you can see how it goes together. We have a top piece, a bottom piece, two side pieces, and this angled piece in the center that helps square it and give it some strength as we... We're going to have a lot of weight on this table. I want it to be good and strong, and this is one of the major advantages to having a cross piece like this, gives it that added strength. But let's go ahead and get started putting our wood together. We're just using two by fours that I bought from my big box lumber store, but we're going to trim them down a little bit because I don't really like the rounded edge that comes from factory 2x4s when I'm putting something together. I like to have a little bit of a crisp edge. And so instead of keeping it 3.5 inches wide, we're going to rip it down to 3 inches wide. So that's our first step. We start by cutting one of the edges off. So I have set my saw at, instead of 3.5 thickness, I've set it at 3 and 5 sixteenths. We'll take off one of the edges. Then we'll turn around and reset our saw at three and take off the other edge to end up with a three inch width total on our wood. Let's go ahead and get that done. In our assembly of our rib, we're just going to put a butt joint like this, but we're going to be putting it together with two and a quarter inch, two and a half inch screws that will go through here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to countersink us a couple of holes. We're doing this so that we don't split our two by four as we're assembling. I marked just a little line on my end of my stock so that I know where to put my holes. And I'm going to show you one other thing that I do that makes it just a little easier. Something that I like to do in all of my assembly work. I have here my 18 gauge brad nailer and it is able to put in a 2 inch nail. I don't use two inch nails very often, but two inch nails will go through this one and a half inch stock and hold it in place 
while I put my screw in. So it's really, again, like I always do with my 18 gauge brad nailer, it's more for alignment than it is for strength. So let's show you how I put a joint together. We've got to have our screw holes to the outside. We're flush to the bottom of there. And we're just going to put two nails in like that. Then we're going to come back with our two and a half inch screw. And put two screws just like that. And that's a good strong butt joint for our rib. And we're going to go ahead and do that the rest of the way around and I'll come back and show you about the middle piece. We're getting ready to put our angled piece in the center. It goes from here to here. This is three inches wide. This is a 23 and a half degree angle, which I measured and calculated to go from end to end on this. Also, the length of this, I think, what did I say? Four, 34 and 5 16 from long point to short point. Now, when I got done putting this together, I put my square in here, and we are not exactly square. It's just not, a, not as square as we would like to have it. Which brings this into play. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand this up like this. We're going to put this piece in the middle of our three inch wide piece. So this is inch and a half wide. This is three inches wide, which would give us three quarters of an inch on each side. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put three quarters of an inch on each side. There we are. We're going to come back now again with our two inch nail that we were doing. We're going to hold this piece tight down in the corner and we're going to give it a couple of nails to hold it in place. Then we're going to give it a countersink and put a screw in like that. Okay, now we're going to turn this over and we're loose on this side. Let me turn this around so you can see. We're loose on this side because we're not square. When I put this in place and nail it and screw it, it's going to pull this rib square so that we will be just exactly where we want to be. And all of this, this is a squaring piece and a strengthening piece. And we're going to get it put in there just like it's supposed to be. And it'll do just exactly what we want it to do because we've calculated our measurements. Okay, there's our three quarter. We're going to give it a couple of nails there. I'm going to put two screws in this side so that it pulls it as we tighten those two and a half inch screws into our cross piece. Okay, now that has pulled that joint nice and tight, let's check it again for square. And it squared it right up. We'll check it both directions. Did exactly what we wanted it to do. It made our piece good and square. Now let's bring all three of these ribs over here. And you can see how all three of these ribs are nice together. And we're going to put it together in this configuration right here. We're going to have one rib out at this side, one rib out at this side, and one down at the center, alternating the directions of our corner support. All right, ready next step. We're getting ready now to put our top and bottom two by six pieces on. I have done the same thing with my two by sixes that I did with my two by fours. I've cut them down to five inches instead of the five and a half that they come from the factory with in order to give me a good, clean, straight, sharp edge. I've also marked where this piece meets up with my rib and drilled my holes just like I did when I was putting together the rib. We have at the end, 
we have at the center, and then we have here at the other end. There'll be a piece that will go along there here, one piece in the center, and another piece on the top. Now this is laying on its side. So this is the bottom of our table uh, construction piece. This is the side, this is the other side. So we're putting the bottom pieces on right now. And there'll be three, just like this, and then there'll be three at the top the exact same way. So let's go ahead and get the bottom pieces put on, and we're doing the exact way that we did our uh, ribs. We're going to take our two inch nail, our 18 gauge brad gun, and our two inch nail. We're gonna make sure we're good and flush. We're gonna give it just a couple of nails to hold it in place. And then we're taking our two and a half inch screws and we're going to go ahead and pull this all together with two and a half inch screws like this all the way along both all of our pieces. Okay, now that's the way it's going to go. And then again, like I say, all the pieces will go together the exact same way. This rib will be perfectly centered, one at each end, and we'll have three pieces top and bottom. Let me go ahead and get that done, and we'll come back and see where we are when we get done with that. Okay, we have the framing portion of our table done. This is the ribs that we talked about. Here's our top and bottom structures. You can see that we have three pieces across the top and three pieces across the bottom. I have added a little one by two on the, this is the face side of our table. There's just a one by two here. And let's walk around the back side and show you the back side. Now the back side looks almost the same, except for I put a one by four at the bottom. Now we have an open space in here and we're going to do something eventually, shelves, drawers. I'm not sure what, but we have room to use some additional storage space under the table. The next thing that goes on our table is these corner blocks that will fit right here. We'll attach those front and back. That helps in the squaring and the stability of our table. This table will be strong enough to put anything on it that we want. It'll hold hundreds of pounds by the time we get done putting it all together. It's going to be strong. It's been quite easy to build and that was the thing easy, strong. So let's go ahead and get our corner blocks on. I want to show you the wheels that we're going to put on first. I bought these wheels from Amazon. Uh, Mugi, Mugai, I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce the name of these wheels, but that really isn't important. It's what they do that's important. They're big wheels, easy to roll around, going to give us a lot of mobility on our cart. We're going to screw them on the bottom. They have a swivel that is 360 degrees, but they lock. And the one nice thing that about these wheels that you especially want on a table is not only do they lock so the wheel can't roll back and forth, it also locks so the wheel can't spin. And so when you lock the wheel down, it locks the table in one place. These are real, real heavy duty wheels and that double locking capability will hold your table in place as you're working, but then when you're ready to move it out of the way, you just release the catch and off it goes. I went ahead and installed the block that I was talking about that goes on the end. On the front side of our table, I made the block flush with our framework, and this is the one by two and it sticks out. I nailed it on with our two inch nails and I went through and put some two and a half inch grabbers to pull it tight. On the back side, I did the same thing, but I brought it out flush with my pine addition because I had a one by four at the bottom and a one by two at the top. So I actually brought my block here a little bit forward. We're gonna go ahead and install the other two on the other side, and then we're ready to roll our framework over and install our wheels before we get ready to put our top on. We're all done with the framing lumber portion of our table. I wanna show you a lot. One last thing I did, we got our corner blocks on. After I put the corner blocks on, I took my palm sander and just went down the corners of my corner blocks only just to soften the outside edges. We're now gonna take it off of the table saw bench and put it on the floor and put wheels on. 
We're getting ready to put our wheels on. I wanted to talk about the placement. We're going to put our plate flush with this edge and flush with the two by six that is underneath. So this piece of additional pine, we're going to hold back on that. So we're going to put it right there. And the reason we're going to put it right here is so that we can hit the locking mechanism with our toe as we move the table around. So this gives us access to that locking mechanism. We're using an inch and a quarter grabber screw with a little washer and we're just going to put four screws just like that all the way around on each of our rollers and get those put on. With our base all done for our table with our wheels installed you can see how easy that rolls around. I want to come back and give just a little comment in the spirit of full disclosure. I put on our wheels with inch and a quarter grabbers through the washer when I went to turn it over. The wood being a soft pine wood, one of those wheels pulled right out. So I went back and I replaced all of my inch and a quarter screws with two and a half inch screws. I want to show you this locking mechanism on these wheels. Now you can see how they spin all the way around. And then when you lock them, you just push down this tab and it clicks and it locks. And you can see how now that doesn't spin and it doesn't move. And it really, if you lock all four corners when you're working, this really makes a table that doesn't go anywhere on you because when you're working, that's the last thing you want to do is have your table travel on you. Let's go ahead and put the top on. Now, the width and the length of my table base is exactly six inches smaller than the tape top that we're putting on. So there's a three inch overhang calculated all the way around. I like an overhang so that I can clamp things to the bench as I'm working. We'll start off with one layer of three quarter inch particle board. Okay, we'll center that. We'll put some screws down to the top. Now, given what we learned with our feet, we're going to use inch and a quarter screws on a lot of it, but I'm going to make sure I got some two and a half inch screws through this so that our top is anchored good too, because, you know, the opportunity to maybe lift this table by the edges, I don't want to pull those screws out. Let me go ahead and get this tied down. With our initial layer of particle board screwed to our underneath frame, we're getting ready now to put the top two layers on. Now, it's going to be particle board, particle board, and melamine on top. So I have these two pieces flipped upside down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this layer of particle board to the melamine, lining it up. And then I'm going to flip both pieces over at once. And I'm going to anchor these two pieces by screws from around the edges of our initial piece giving us a nice, smooth, clean top with no screws. And it'll make a great assembly surface. We have our top two pieces tied together. You can see all my screws from underneath. Let's roll this over. Now this is both particle board, so this is a heavy, heavy piece. Now, one of the other things I did while I was doing this was checking to make sure that my surfaces were flat. I put my straight edge back and forth all along here. So when I get this all tied together, I have a nice, flat, strong assembly table. Let me go ahead and get the rest of the screws on here. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. You know, when we get all done, I'll bet you're wondering how much all this costs. I'm going to add up everything that it took to put this table together, and I'll tell you how much we are invested in this. Well, all done. 
At the very last, after I screwed the top down, I went around with my palm sander, sanded it, and then took my router and routed a little round over on the edge so I have a nice clean top. But oh, it came out nice. It's just exactly what I need. And the nice thing about being mobile is it's not in the way. If I don't need it, I can push it out of the way. This is really a super assembly table for anyone's shop. And I told you I'd tell you about the cost. After I had purchased the wheels for less than $50, I was less than $300 for everything. Lumber, sheet goods, and wheels. So this is not even a bad table to build according to how much it costs. And I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some drawers underneath it but I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet, but I have the space because of the way I build it. Anyway, here's another addition to our great shop, and we have more to come next time on Woodworking with Wes.